Hello there and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here every week meeting interesting people and dealing with topical issues. And we welcome back an old friend today. Yeah, really good to have Burns Hargis join us again uh, for his sixth appearance. He uh, has recently returned to Oklahoma City from Stillwater where he finished up uh, uh, a tour as president of Oklahoma State University uh, and uh, just did an incredible job. And But we're Selfish and glad to have him back. Yeah, lots to talk about with Burns, and we'll get to it after this. Right now, six feet can feel like a long ways away. But from six feet, we can still smile at each other from our doorways and our stairways, from opposite sides of the street and opposite sides of the country, through fear and frustrations. We can remind each other that we are still here for each other because we can still smile at each other and we're not going anywhere. Military service ran in my blood, starting from my father, which joined the Navy, then on the Chickasaw side, my uncle, which served in the United States Army. I'm Benjamin Espinosa, Chief Petty Officer, United States Navy, and I'm Chickasaw. I went to the Secretary of Defense's staff at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., which ultimately led to becoming a combat support technician for Naval Special Warfare, specifically SEAL Team 10. I think to be proud and to love your tribe, to love being Chickasaw, you also have to love being American. You also have to love everything that America stands for, equality, perseverance, professionalism, and power. I want my family to know that their father is a good person, but also feels that he has an obligation to the country and to love this nation. Anything worth having is worth dying for. The military and the country owes me nothing. I owe it everything. See more stories about the Chickasaw people at ProfilesOfANation.com. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Yes, as we talked about in the open, we we're really personally pleased uh, to bring you a great guest today, Burns Hargis, the uh, recently retired president of Oklahoma State University. This is his sixth appearance on The Verdict. Uh, Burns was the 18th president of Oklahoma State University, but only one of two that had actually also been a graduate of that fine institution. Uh, Burns did a great job at Oklahoma State. Uh, prior to that time, he excelled in banking and the practice of law, and frankly, in everything else that I've ever been associated with, Burns has been a leader. Uh, he uh, was, to some extent, a little bit of a, a spark for Mick and I to start this show because of Burns and Mike Turpin's show, Flashpoint, uh, which uh, was an award-winning show, is an award-winning show, still running, uh, not with Burns, but still going on and doing a good job as well. Uh, Burns is a member of the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, was inducted in 2009, and along with uh, Mick, was one, uh, uh, one of three people, two of three people on this set that ran for governor in the state <laughs> of Oklahoma. Uh, Burns, really glad to have you back. It's Great always to good back. to see you. <laughs> good to see you all, too. You look relaxed and... Yeah, I well carefree. When people say you look, I look good. I, I say uh, you need to see your ophthalmologist because <laughs> I see it every in the mirror every morning. I know what I look like. When uh, when you took that job at OSU thirteen years ago or fourteen years ago now, but uh, did you think you'd be there that long? No, no. I, they they average for a, a comprehensive research university presidents is about five years. It's, there's some notable exceptions to that, but I. Uh, I, I just I didn't think it'd be as much fun as it turned out to be most of the time. Yeah. Well, talk about higher ed then. Uh, I mean, we have a system in Oklahoma. It's, I mean, it's it's not totally unique from the rest of the models around the country, but it has its own intri intricacies. Yeah. What do, what do you think of it? I mean, if, if we were starting the state over and we were designing a state government, would we have higher ed like we do if Burns Hargis got to write the Constitution? Uh, I w it would certainly be independent 
uh, it, I mean, you're not totally dead independent because you're dependent on the appropriations. The governor so appoints the regions. The governor appoints the regions, but no, no governor, even over a eight-year period, can mm -hmm. uh, change the control until the very, very end. Uh, so we are, we, and OU and OSU have their own constitutional board. It, that only happened in the in the forties, at it, especially with OSU, since it was the agriculture school. Uh, they, we had one president that served for two months, <laughs> but but I mean, if the governor got mad at somebody, they, he just yanked them, mm -hmm. and uh, you just didn't have the tenure that uh, that we can do now. So we're 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 looking to the state regions for our appropriations and approval of our programs, but our real bosses are the reg the board of regents of the respective schools. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's a good system. I think. Uh, I think there are some things you could do with the two years and uh, and career tech that, mm -hmm. would, that might uh, have some great synergy there. Uh, but I wouldn't change it materially. I'd just give it more money. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you about uh, OSU being a land-grant college, uh, the only one in Oklahoma. Well, I, Langston. Langston. Langston yeah, land-grant. Sorry. Uh, would you, would you, if you could start it all over, would you try to incorporate those same uh, benefits and burdens as being a land-grant college? Well, it was a great system. You know, it, uh, Senator Morrill from Vermont and Abraham Lincoln kind of came up with, Morrill started in the 1850s, started the idea. But it was uh, signed into law by Lincoln in, uh, in the, during the Civil War. And uh, the idea was that at the time, the only people who went to college were the privileged. Uh, and uh, he thought that every, both of them thought everybody ought to go be able to go to college, and uh, and the and it shouldn't be so prohibitively expensive that you don't go. And but you also had another mission in addition to educating uh, the population. You also had uh, what we call extension, extending the university to uh, to the local extension offices in the counties, and that is a uh, so we we research and, and discover things in, in, say, in the College of Agriculture, and then that is, that is shared with our, our state. But it's broader than just agriculture. Your extension deals with many other things, health, engineering, that sort of thing. So basically, we're, we're a resource to the state. So we, as we say, we do research, we uh, instruct students, and, uh, and we serve our state with both. I uh, am fortunate to have both a son and a daughter that are graduates of Oklahoma State and a granddaughter that's about to begin in the fall at Oklahoma State. Good. Uh, the thing that has always impressed me about your institution, and it's what really got those folks to attend and do well there, uh, was the atmosphere. Uh, I don't... I'm not meaning to criticize anybody, any other institution's atmosphere and bring this up, but somehow you get on the OSU campus and you feel a very friendly, homey, comfortable atmosphere. How do you generate that and how do you keep that going? Oh, if I knew, I'd bottle it and sell it. But yeah. uh, <laughs> the, uh, I, my, my theory of it is that we are, while most of our students are from uh, major metropolitan areas and you know, cities and towns, a, a good number are from the country. And they've gone through FFA, and they've, uh, they, which is a great leadership program. I never got to go through it because I was, went to school here, but in Oklahoma City. But uh, I think that was those rural roots, uh, kind of the attitude that I'm not better than anybody else, but I'm just as good. But the small town rural roots, I think, permeate the whole campus. And it's... Uh, that's just a theory of mine, but but I think you're right. I mean, it's it, it's not like I've been to a, to a lot of institutions uh, enough to judge them, but uh, yeah. it it really is a, kind of the secret sauce. Yeah. How did you divide your time? How how much time did faculty issues require? How much time did academics require in general? How much time did athletics require? Do you, do you have any? Were there any surprises in that regard? Well, I uh, not. Not particularly, because I, I, I'd been a region for five years, so yeah. I, I knew, I kind of knew, uh, I didn't know everything. They, you know, <laughs> they, uh, 
Henry Bellman always said that uh, presidents use re regents like drunks use lampposts more for support than illumination. <laughs> 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 so you don't, you, you don't know everything. But, uh, you know, I spend an enormous amount of my time fundraising because uh, we just needed it. I, you know, it, I'm, not, I'm not an academic. I mean, I have a law degree, but I'm not a, uh, an academic. You know, PhDs think JD means junior doctor. <laughs> and, and so, and I pretty well left academics to the provost, to the academics. Mm -hmm. uh, rarely did I try to stick my nose into some of those things. I, I tried to reorganize some things. We merged two colleges. That was a, a big, and they moved around some, uh, some uh, departments that didn't quite fit in my mind. I didn't get all that done, but some of it. But more than that, I, I really was just trying to raise, as it turned out, two billion dollars. And you uh, raised two billion dollars. Well, I didn't, but, uh, but well, but during my during, tenure, during your tenure, the university raised two billion dollars. It's actually two two. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah really it is. Uh, it was uh, it really was a you know I started in March of '08, the year of the recession, but no, nobody knew we were broke yet, <laughs> <laughs> and so. People were free with their money. I mean, I'd never gotten a hundred million dollars out of Boone, you know, in October, when when everybody realized what was going on. So we had a really fortuitous timing. <clears throat> also, the legislature decided to uh, do away with the endowed chair match. Yeah. As of July of that year, and uh, so we had to take advantage of that. And that was a great opportunity, and Boone gave that hundred million to match other donors' gifts. And their names would be on the endowed chair, not Boone's. So it, it, we just got off to a roaring start. And then uh, just through, it was funny, the, we, we, the campaign was Branding Success. It was called Branding Success. And the foundation said, well, let's go around to all the units. Let's see what they need to really get better. And um, <clears throat> we will we'll aggregate that, and that'll be our goal. And I said, well, you can do all that, but the goal is going to be a billion dollars. And they said, well, where did you get that number? I said, I got it because it's big. <laughs> and nobody thinks we can do it. And, uh, and I know we can get there. And so we gave ourselves seven years. But we made, we made it in five years. Wow. Uh, so it was, uh, that, that was a big part of my time yeah. there. And uh, by the way, the, that was 13 years ago. The endowed chair program finally was fully matched this past session. Oh. Burns Hargis is our guest today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. Here office at the University of Central Oklahoma, it is a one-stop shop for veterans when they're trying to get their education. I call it my encore job. I get to take care of veterans. We help them transition. I was that guy that transitioned after 24 years, and in the end, GI Bill is a benefit that those soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marine earned. It was the thing that made us the greatest country in the world coming out of World War II, and it will continue to do the same thing for this future generation of service members. OU Law has a history and heritage that are unparalleled. At the University of Oklahoma College of Law, we empower our students to pursue the career of their dreams. We have the highest U.S. news ranking ever achieved by an Oklahoma law school. We are the first law school in the country to launch a college-wide digital initiative. And this year, our competition teams rank number two in the nation. OU Law, generations of excellence, limitless possibilities. We are back on The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and our guest is Burns Hargis. Burns, uh, we've done a show with your bride, and how's she getting along? How's she enjoying moving back to Oklahoma City? She's, she's tired of cooking. <laughs> 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 she, she's definitely tired of cooking, but she's doing great. She, she, uh, you know, she started that pet therapy program, right. and it's now the largest in the country. One of the few in the country, frankly. Hmm. And, uh, you know, the dogs are trained, the owners are trained. Uh, the dogs wear a vest that says, ask to pet me, I'm friendly. 
And I said, I want one of those vests for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but but uh, anyway, uh, it's it's still going. They got over a hundred teams, and and uh, so she she spent a lot of time on that. She's trying to introduce it into uh, OSU Oklahoma City, and maybe go beyond that mm -hmm. here at Oklahoma Christian. Uh, tell me about the Leadership Institute. Well, we you know students get leadership training just by kind of osmosis, and maybe if they're in a uh, president's leadership council or they're in the uh, sorority or fraternity or some other uh, independent organization. But most don't, uh, and it's hard for them too because they may be raising kids, they may have jobs and the like. So our idea is to, with this leadership institute, I have a $2 million chair that was uh, donated by Frank and Carol Mor Morsi, uh, Borsani in uh, Tamp Tampa, Florida. And they... Uh, so it, so it produces around $100,000 a year, and so we're dedicating that to uh, to the program. And we're going to train upperclassmen to teach lower division people how to, you know, basic leadership principles. And uh, and it'll be experiential. I mean, you'll be put in a position, and you've got to make a decision, and then they'll, we'll critique the decision. And so we we got to do it when they're – a good example, President's Leadership Council has well over 1,000 applicants. Only 125 get in. And they got in because they're already leaders. <laughs> you know, they, mm -hmm. they, they had the criteria. So we've got to really broaden that part of our mission. Every university says we develop leaders, but in terms of actually uh, deliberately uh, having programs, I, I dare say that doesn't mm -hmm. exist for all the suits. Before you went to OSU, you had a career in banking. How did those experiences aid you as in the presidency at OSU? Well, financially, it uh, it, was, it was I understood banking. Of course, mm -hmm. I, I closed Penn Square Bank, so it's not like <laughs> that. so. I, I knew a little something about banking, and uh, the fact that George Kaiser wanted me on his board stunned me. And then I, I went for full time. But you you basically uh, learn really about how to how to lead people. There's a you know you have a bunch of people that uh, you're responsible for. And uh, and you learn learn more about just finances. So I was I'm told I was far more interested in the finances uh, at OSU than any president they had worked with, because I think the numbers really is the platform for everything else. I mean, you, you, well, your undergraduate degree was accounting. Accounting, yeah, yeah. I wasn't a very good accountant, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you can't add two to ten, 10 numbers twice and get the same answer. You probably need to. <laughs> well, old accountants never die. They just lose their balance. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's a good one. So what's next? What, what are you thinking? Well, I'm chairing the Leadership Institute, and that's, uh, that's good. And I'm, I'm looking to get re-involved in Oklahoma City and, mm -hmm. and uh, the state and, and just hopefully make things better somewhere. Well, mm -hmm. we're glad to have you back. Uh, we had... Uh, your new athletic director on just a month or so ago, Good. Chad. Yeah, Chad Weiberg. Uh, and made me mention to him, I uh, mentioned it to you as well, that we've had a number of the OSU coaches on. And to a person, the ones we've had on have just been outstanding uh, individuals and uh, really had a lot of good things to uh, give yeah, to they, our listeners. I think we, I think our, our athletic department runs clean. If you, and that was my main deal. And so when that Sports Illustrated yeah. thing came out, it was so opposite of everything that I understood and, and that we were trying to, trying to convey to our athletic department. You play by the rules. I mean, period. Well, all the rules. And because when you get, get NCAA problems, it just distracts you from everything else you ought to be looking at. And... Uh, it, as it turned out, the Sports Illustrated deal was, as the NCAA announced, was fundamentally unfounded. It was just a hit job, and but oh, it was I, I was I was for the. They said we did. I didn't respond right away, and I said, well, I didn't know if, whether it's true or not. I wanted to find <laughs> yeah. out if there was any truth to it, and we found out there wasn't. Yeah. What do you think about NIL and its uh, impact on uh, collegiate athletics? Well, it's a, uh, you know, I think. I think people really don't realize the uh, uh, the value that scholarship athletes receive. Not only do they receive their full cost of attendance, which includes their room and board and all the rest, they are they have 
tutors, they have all kinds of support uh, for their, uh, their academic success. And that has a lot of value. And uh, so, to, and then to pit one player against others is just, it, it just I mean, they, they estimate that some of these guys are gonna get one or two million bucks a year. And you know, if I'm balking for the guy getting two million, he better share it with me. <laughs> Especially if he's right-handed and I'm the left tackle. <laughs> or tough enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. No, uh, NIL and free transfers, uh, I, I just I don't know how you can operate with that. You never know what your roster is going to be, and I uh, I think having people sit out a year if they do transfer is wise for them academically, so that they get reengaged in whatever institution they went to. Uh, but to be able to just go and you know be a free agent every year doesn't make any sense to me. Burns. And I was on the NCAA board, so I, I mean yeah. I, I could I do anything about it? No, the courts took care mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. If you were sitting across the table from a prospective student, a high school senior, we'll say, with good credentials, what would you tell them about why they ought to seriously consider Oklahoma State University? Well, actually, what I tell them is, uh, and I've said this a million times probably, I, I said, look, everybody's going to tell you where you go, go to school. But any large, any good university, any, you're going to get a good education, any, really at most everywhere. Uh, but, and your friends will tell you where to go, and your parents may tell you where they think you ought to go, but you're the one going. And you gotta live there, and consequently, you, uh, you, you just go around, visit the different schools, you'll know, you'll know right here where you ought to go. And that's usually the way it worked. Yeah, good advice. Yeah. Uh, well, go ahead. What sort of feedback did you get from the alumni you visited with across the country when they looked back at? when you were asking for money or for whatever reason you were interacting with alumni, what did they say about OSU that, that touched you? Well, they all have a very warm spot in their heart for OSU. I mean, they, they really uh, loved the university. They just had not been involved because, well, like Frank and Carol are in Tampa, Florida, and, and uh, we, we had, of course, lots of people from Dallas and, and uh, Denver and places like that. But they just, they just loved their time at OSU. And uh, fortunately, some of them became very financially successful and, mm -hmm. they, and they shared it with us. So it's, it's that secret sauce we were talking about earlier. Yeah. I, I, I wish I could bottle it, I really do. <laughs> Did your experience as a candidate uh, and being, a, being forced to ask for money to raise money. Did that help you as a university president in asking for money? Yeah, but I've always raised money. I mean, that's, that's something I, I, I don't know that I exactly like to do it, but I think I'm pretty good at it. And uh, so I, I thought my background, honestly, to talk about the ego, but I think maybe I had the perfect background to be a university president because I'd been around politics mm -hmm. uh, a lot. And as Woodrow Wilson said when he ran for governor of New Jersey, when he was Princeton, president of Princeton, a reporter asked him why he was running for governor. He said to get out of politics. <laughs> so, so, so better around politics, raised money my whole career basically, uh, and uh, and had a, a business background. And I just think, uh, and to some, I, I just think all those things kind of combine to uh, give you a leg up. And and don't stick your nose in academics. <laughs> let, let, get a good provost. And let them take care of it. All right. What do our uh, viewers need to know? We got 30 seconds left. What do, what do our viewers need to know about uh, about the professional career and the presidency at OSU? Well, I think they need to know if you get a chance to be a university president, do it. It, it, <laughs> it is it is a wonderful job most of the time. <laughs> it, uh, it it really is, and the energy that these those kids exude is huh. amazing. I mean, it's, if you if you're feeling bad feeling frustrated or whatever, just wait till the change of class and get out there and walk around. Mm -hmm. You'll come back just invigorated. Burns Hargis, one year removed from his uh, 13 years as the president at Oklahoma State University. Thanks so much for coming yeah, back. Thank appreciate you, Burns. It. Really right. appreciate I hope it. I can do it a seventh time. <laughs> or eighth. Count Kent, on it. <laughs> Kent and I'll have a final word after this. It used to be okay in hospitals. 
that used to be okay in movie theaters. It was okay in classrooms, restaurants, and airplanes. But thanks to a greater understanding of the dangers, that's not okay anymore. So now that we know secondhand smoke causes lifelong health problems, why is it still okay to smoke with children in the car? Bottom line, it's not okay. Let's get serious about protecting kids. Join the fight at StopsWithMe.com. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. You will always be mom and dad to me. We have uh, uh, children come from a different lifestyle, different mindset. You have to open your arms and really do what you have to do to have that child become a part of your family. And if it's more patience, that's what you do. Kids got to know they can trust you. And that's what we try to do with these kids. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Welcome back to the set of The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, we had Burns Hargis on oh, today. Oh, yeah, it's always just a joy to, to have Burns back on the show and to just to get to chat with him. We've been friends uh, for uh, way too many years to try to calculate, and he is just a, a jewel. And a, a career of leadership, a career of giving back, and he's a career of high profile. I'm, I remember when he was you know, chairman of the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce yeah, for a year. I mean, he's just given his time philanthropically and also generously to the to the community time and time again. He's been a success in everything he's done. Well put. All right, that's going to do it for us. Uh, you can get more information about OSU, obviously, at the traditional websites. And we have a website, theverdict.tv. We'll see you next week. Yeah, I, I could have corrected you and said I never got good at golf. <laughs> <laughs>